Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. We have a guest on today's episode, and you guys are going to be very happy about this guest because his other episode is one of my top episodes. So we have Jai Long on the podcast today. So Jai, say hi to everyone. I You've given an intro already, but just kind of give people the rundown on who you are if they don't know who you are. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here again. Um, my name is Jai, Jai Long, and I'm an Australian, actually business coach it's 5 a.m here right now and i've got some pretty funny puffy hairs i've just rolled into my studio to come and talk to cassidy um yeah i think one of my superpowers actually is just like straight up business and i think it's because i see business as so creative and i have one of those like i'm sure it's only like one percent of people in the world where I can use my left brain and my right brain basically at the same time and come together. So I'm very emotional, but I'm also very analytical. Um, and I feel like it works really well. And I actually feel like a lot of w- like wedding photographers would would resonate with that as well because you can go and create the art, but also you know you need to make the business around that as well. So yeah, mm-hmm. excited to talk about stuff today. Yes, for sure. I do feel like a lot of wedding photographers are, <clears throat> you have to be both. I mean, honestly, as like a small mm. business owner, you kind of wear all the hats um but yeah that's a great superpower to have for sure well you know Um, actually i've seen um there's a lot of people on the fence between um and this is like an argument that's been going from the start of time with any create with any creative field but it's like if you're really good at photography you don't need to be good at business marketing and sales on the other side is if you're really good at business marketing and sales you don't really need to be great at photography and i see these two camps and they kind of fight each other And they're both right, I believe. Like I actually believe that they're both right and they both have merit. Um, But I honestly believe like you've got to be good at both. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's sort of where I am. And and you can like smash them together opposed to trying to fight each other. Yeah. I feel like you don't have to be like incredible at both. Just good good enough almost. You know what I mean? Totally, totally. Yeah, because I feel yeah. I feel like I kind of fall in the category of like, I feel like I'm pretty good at business, but and I think I'm good at photography, too, but I don't think I'm like the best photographer ever. You know mm. what I mean? But like, I think it works because you're able to pair something you're really good at with something that you're you're good at, but you're not like the best ever. You know what I think is funny, though, is you say that you're not very good at business and maybe not good, at, like the best at photography and stuff, but you're probably comparing yourself with the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in the world, you know? And so mm-hmm. I think these days um, we have a kind of a skewed view of our own talents because we do get to see the best of the best. And everyone has their own story or their own background, their own experiences and stuff that created, you know, and forged them to where they are with their craft and stuff. But I actually would say that you are really good at business and really good at photography. And (laughs) it's funny because even you in business, like you wouldn't know that you're so good at business because a lot of the time we're not classically trained so we think we're missing something but you're better than 99% of business people so without even knowing <laughs> well, it you. and I love that. <laughs> Thanks. That was me fishing for a compliment. I cast the yeah, line yeah. and I'm you totally to you. took the bait. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Imagine well, if it was well, the opposite. I was like, yeah, you're right actually. You're horrible. <laughs> I would literally hit end call. I'd be like, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just finished. <laughs> I, I would actually post it. It would be a five minute long interview. That would be it. Yeah. So there's this one five minute long interview of Jai Long and it's just the intro and the rest yeah. didn't make it. <laughs> it didn't. Yeah. So today we're talking about business. Um, we're going kind of big picture with it because I feel like that is what a lot of people kind of struggle with or like don't know about is like the big mm. picture of business. So that's what we're going to chat about today. We're going to go into some strategy stuff. Um, kind of like a big masterclass. If you're just like business for dummies, let's call it business for dummies. Let's do business for dummies. I think this is really good. Okay. Well, let's get started. The first thing I think is, um, like really it all starts at mindset, doesn't it? So Mm -hmm. I think the word business is a horrible word to be honest. And I've got to preframe this. I don't just love business for the sake of business. I'm not like some business mogul that's walking around with spreadsheets and looking at my accounts and like, you know, I'm like Mr. Burns in my office. Just, it's not like that at all. And I think so often we have this mindset around, um, if you like business, then you're not a true creative or it's, Business is for business people and, you know, it's about sales and it's about all these things that we don't like. 
And if you don't fall in love with business and you don't find a way to fall in love with business, it's going to be really hard for you forever because the only difference between someone that's like fully booked out right now and someone that's not is the knowledge gap. It's like the bit that they know that then and and their mindset, like the bit that they know that they need to show up and they and have got to do something, which is really cool. Now, for me, if I can just digress for a second, like business actually changed my life, like completely changed my life. And I think um, when I realized this, that like it's a vehicle for me to make my own rules, forge my own path. It's a vehicle for me to bring what I love to create to the world. Like it's a vehicle for me to be able to serve people. Um, to to actually design a life that I love. Like I don't have to have an alarm anymore. Like there's so many things that I don't need to do. And I know this sounds cheesy, but when I really wanted to like just go out and work for myself, the thing that I would imagine was imagine not having an alarm because I used to be a tradesman as well. Imagine not having an alarm and imagine just being able to sit at a cafe on a Monday with no expectations and not having to go anywhere and do anything. And I know that sounds cheesy, but fuck, man, it, I've been doing this for 17 years and it's still amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, still True. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> yeah. It, like that whole sitting at a coffee shop, like that is goals. And when you sit there, yeah. it's like surreal. It's like, I can't believe I'm like sitting here. Like, and then you think of the other people around you too. You're like, what are you doing that you're mm. able to sit here on a Monday as well? Um, oh, I think yeah. a so lot it, of more all these people in here have cracked the code. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're all smiling. They're all happy. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Yeah, it really is. And it's funny you say that about, um, like, okay, when I think of business, I think you're one of the people who has taken these traditional views of business and you've made it creative. You've almost like you've made your own path basically. And I feel like you've taken the things that like people teach you, you know, in business school or whatever. And you've just been like, no, I'm actually going to do this. Like, I think (laughs) as like, you started as like a wedding photographer. Now you're doing coaching. And I just feel like you're really just making this path of like, I'm doing whatever I want and it's working, but it's like a creative path and you're turning Mm. your business into like the actual business strategy and you're having fun with it and making that creativity as well yeah and so the way that I see it's the whole thing's a game and I love playing games so I didn't really go to school when I was younger so a lot of people don't know this I didn't really go to school Um, we were homeless for a long time and I um I couldn't read and write until I was like 20 years old and I had to learn it myself so I was already in a I actually already started a business by the time I was 20 and I was bankrupt by the time I was 21 so just sort of starting off like um for me with business, like I didn't learn the rules. So I didn't learn, I didn't have to unlearn a lot of stuff where a lot of entrepreneurs have to unlearn a lot of things. Like if you go to school, for instance, then you are conditioned and taught and forged into the perfect employee where you wear a uniform, you line up, you only can speak if you put your hand up, you're not allowed to collaborate with anybody. That's called cheating. You know, you have to work on your own. You have to compare yourself to everybody else. You have to get good grades. Like the whole thing, in my opinion, is very a toxic way to sort of grow up. And so when we become entrepreneurs, we do the same thing. We compare ourselves with everybody else. We're not allowed to collaborate with anyone that's cheating. So we've got to do it on our own. You know, the whole thing, it doesn't make any sense. So I didn't have to unlearn any of that. So for me, it just came in as my business is a game and I get to make the rules. And if it's a game, I think this is the mindset that we need to remember. What I have realized is everyone really sucks at business because they're afraid of losing. And if you're playing a game, you got to fall in love with losing. Like losing is just as fun as winning. Like literally, if you go out there and you're playing, you know, let's say you're playing netball, volley- volleyball, like basketball or something like that, not every weekend you're going to win. And that's okay because then you go back and you go back to your strategies and then you train a little bit more and then you talk about it. And then, you know, it's just, it's part of the game and you're still in there. You're still high-fiving the people that did win. You're still handshaking each other. Like it's still so fun. But then we don't see that in the business arena. We just go like, oh my God, I'm so scared of losing so much so that I won't even try to win. And so much so I won't even play the game. I'll sit in the grandstands and I'll just like judge others that are playing the game. And I think it's just the worst place to be. Like we've got to get in the game and literally just have fun with it. Mm-hmm. That's uh, okay. That's how I view like posting reels and TikToks. Like mm. people are so scared to even post it, because you're like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to get 10 views. It's like, okay, but what if you get 2 million? You know, mm. like I think the concept of being afraid to even start it is so paralyzing. Like you have to be willing to start it first of all. And then if you feel, okay, 
like you said, like you fail, you learn something on the way. And I think those things that you learn, that's the knowledge gap that you're talking about between people is like the lessons that you've learned as you failed. I also think if you're, if you're not posting because you're scared of getting 10 views, there's a deeper problem, you know. I think like <laughs> it means that you really care what people think and you're doing it for the wrong reason and you will never get 2 million views just because it's you're not trying to create a community. You're trying to work for Instagram, you know, mm. or for TikTok and, and it doesn't really make any sense. And I see this over and over. Um, we get so scared of what other people think, so much so, that we won't go and get a second job if we need it. We'll rather just struggle. We won't go and do the jobs that we don't love just because we have to. We won't go and work for free, you know. All these things that blows my mind where for me, because I don't have to unlearn anything and I don't need to impress anyone, I'm like, I will do whatever it takes for me to get my dream to work and that's fucking it, you know. And I don't care if you judge me because I'm on my own path And if you think I've failed, wait till you see my next failure because I'm going to fail bigger. I'm working on some big (laughs) shit, you know, and I, and I work that way. So for me, like I post and I get 10 views and I'm, and I have a big following and they, and people see that. And I'm like, I still don't give a fuck, you know, Mm. it's, it's, yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's, yeah. It's like, you just know that you're, you know, it's quality. It's hitting the right people, you know, hitting the right people, 10 people. It's all you need to hit, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes that's, and that's it. But also, so business, there's a few different things um, and talking about mindset. So there's three pillars that are, that we have where we can leverage things. So we have three pillars of leverage. So the first one's money and the second one would be time and energy. And then the third pillar would be skills, talent and knowledge. And what's really interesting with these three pillars is the first one's money. And what I see people do is they get so stuck on the first one and they think because they got no money, then they can't make money. If they got no money, they can't create a business. If they got no money, they can't advertise, market, they can't get a content creator, they can't, they can't do anything, they're stuck. And then they forget about the other two pillars, which are really important. So if you don't have money, then you can leverage your time and your energy. Every day, man, I have new energy. I'm up right now. It's like 5 a.m. Um, and I know I can waste my energy all the way to the end of the day. I can go to sleep and then I wake up and I've got new energy again. You know, So I was like this yesterday and I'm like this today. I'm going to be like this tomorrow. And then time. Like if you don't have money, then you probably have some time. And so time is a really important one to leverage and it's worth a lot more than money. Then the next one is if you can leverage your skills, your talents and your knowledge, your skills and talents, all these things can be grown. So a lot of people, like, they'll put their money into other things. But if you put your money into your own knowledge and your own skills and you can grow those things, then you need less money and you need less time for your business to blow up. And so as you, if you work on that one the most, you'll see someone that's, like, really good at business, really good at their craft. Like, they need less money. They need less time because people are coming to them. There's less marketing. There's less everything there. And I think it's just really important to remember that. And also the next thing is with on the negative of these three things, if you spend a lot of money, the, the negative is you'll feel entitled because, for example, you'll say, I just spent some money on a content creator and it didn't go viral. It should have because I spent all this money. And I just spent some money on, um, on pick time and, and this should have happened. I just spent a lot of money on Facebook ads and I'm not getting a return. Like what's going on here? And it doesn't work like that. You can't just spend money on something. If you don't know how to do Facebook ads, if you, can't, if you don't have the knowledge and skills and stuff, it doesn't matter how much money you spend. You're not going to get any results, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other one's the same. So people feel entitled that they put time and energy into something. So they're like, I did a style shoot and it didn't go viral. And it's like, just because you sat there, if you sat there on your computer all day and you're just looking at Facebook, but you showed up to work, you don't get points for that, not in the entrepreneurial space. You do in the business space if you're working for someone in your big corporation and you're a cog, but you don't get you don't get awards for just showing up. It doesn't work like that. And I know that's an unpopular opinion because everyone always says, like, you just gotta show up. I'm like, no, you don't. That's like if you're a business owner, then yeah. But if you're an entrepreneur, you don't get points for showing up. You need to start leveraging up your, like even just for reels, for instance, like you can't, you could just post and post and post. You're going to get 10 views, 10 views, 10 views forever until you work on the next pillar. And that's like, oh, my knowledge, my skills. How could I make this reel better? How could I dissect the last one that I did? How could I see what Cassidy did? What hook did she use? How could I see what's trending out there in the world right now? What music's going on? And until you start doing that, then everything else will explode. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, my mind is literally trying to process that right now. Let's go back to the three pillars, okay? 
Um, so would you say that like all three are required in business, like money, what is it? Time and energy skills Mm -hmm. and everything like all three work in harmony or is it like, Oh, like two, like you need two and maybe a little bit of the other, like it is interesting because it's, um, like the truth is, I believe is it kind of goes backwards. So you need, you do need some, um, you need some knowledge, some time and skills and your network there. Then the next one, of course, you're going to need some time and energy. And then the last one, you need less money. And so money is on the very bottom. And I think like, for instance, like when I started my business, um, like I was homeless, I grew up homeless. Right. And so, um, and I've been homeless since I've been an adult as well. So a lot of times people look at me and they go, Jai, yeah, but you've got money and that's how you made money. And I'm like, no, I was resourceful. That's how I made money, you know? And so if I've got the knowledge, it means I could go to someone right now and I could leverage that person. So for instance, maybe um, Cassidy, you have an audience and we are friends. And then I say like, hey, can I, can, I, can I put in my time and energy and organize a styled shoot? I'm going to find a videographer and I'm going to find someone from my collaboration, you know, from my network. And then we can do a shoot together and stuff like that. And then you can come along and then maybe you could take some photos and then tag me in that. You know, and then all of a sudden you would say, well, absolutely, because I need more content. And then they will say, good, because I've got time. So I'll organize mm-hmm. everything, you know. And so what we're doing is we're solving each other's problems. Like you might have some money, but you don't have any time, you know. And so as entrepreneurs, we're always hung up on what we don't have instead of thinking of what we do have. And if I've got mm-hmm. time right now, I could literally go and work for someone somewhere to do something. I don't need money in return, but I, but there could be something else I could get. I could build a portfolio. I could build a network. I could, I could build, you know, the systems in my business, um, like whatever yeah. it is. And even for instance, like when I first started photography, like um, I had the worst gear that you could ever imagine. I was shooting a wedding <laughs> on a fisheye lens and then this massive zoom lens. But honestly, like I would go in and I was pretty good at sales. So my skills were high. And then I would sell my services, get a deposit. Once I got a deposit, I would hire the gear that I needed to shoot the wedding, right? And so I'd also, I would actually, this is the way I'd do it. I'd get the deposit. And once I got the deposit, I put that into my website and into marketing and stuff like that. And when they paid me to shoot the wedding, I would use that money to hire a car because I didn't have a car and then hire my gear. And then I'd go in and I'd spend all my money just on those things. And also I would spend my money on a second photographer that was better than me. So that way I knew that I was nailing everything, you know, and also I was like extending my network and everything. So mm. I just think, um, yeah, in business, it's like such a limiting belief thinking that we need money and we need all these things, but really you have something right now that can work in your favor. You just need to up level your skills and knowledge and work out what can you use to bring someone value? Yeah, no, yes. I, I like that, that, completely answers what I was wondering about. And I'm thinking about like even my own journey. Like I was not like someone that was making a ton of money. Like I was in this like corporate job, but I was making like maybe like literally minimum wage is what I was making, but I was working as a photographer. So I was getting all this knowledge and like Mm. every single day I was shooting and they were paying me minimum wage to just shoot do headshots, do studio shoots. They would literally pay me if I wanted to just learn because like that was helping them and then it was also helping me. So I feel like when I started, it was a knowledge thing for sure. And then from there, I started kind of teaching that on TikTok and I actually grew, I wasn't booking a ton, but when I started like using my knowledge and leveraging it, I actually started booking more weddings. Even though I was teaching Mm. photographers, I was booking more weddings from that because people liked seeing that I had knowledge almost like I feel like knowledge is so powerful Mm. and people don't really realize it but like you can really use what you have already and just build a business like you don't like you said you don't need money yeah and here's something else that you don't really need you don't really need that much time so I think like people grossly underestimate how much time they have. They think that they got no time. And if I, like if someone looks at my, what I do during the day, like I have a big business called No Skin. So I've got a big clothing label, got a shop and a warehouse and we do shipping and all that kind of stuff. I've got my property development business. So we're building properties right now and we're doing all that kind of stuff. I've got my coaching business. We literally have 25,000 clients. Like I got my, I show up on my podcast. I still shoot things. Like there's a lot of shit. I'm like run a team. There's a lot of shit that I'm doing. I also only work like five hours a day and I go and just like chill and relax. I also go to the gym. I go for an hour walk every day. Like there's a lot of things, right? Yeah. And then I'll get someone that comes to me and goes, I just don't have any time. 
and they're actually not doing anything. Like all yeah. they're doing is they're getting in, they're getting busy. And when they get busy, they're all, this is what it looks like. They like come in, they go, okay, today I'm going to seize the day. They don't know how much time they've got in the day. Then they go onto Facebook for a little bit. Then they go, maybe I should run a Facebook ad. I don't really know how to do that. Then they go onto YouTube and have a look at that. Then they go on and then they start thinking about a reel that they do. Then they don't actually do that reel. Then they go on to, someone just emailed them. Now that pulled their attention. And then, and then by the end of the day, they're like, oh man, okay, tomorrow I'm going to seize the day. And so it's impactful every single day. Like there's no impact. Yeah. And so... The way that I look at things is you have more time than you think and it takes less time than you think to make a huge impact. So for an example, it would take roughly around 20 hours for you to fundamentally change your business. And I know this because I've done this so many times. And what I mean by that is if you're sitting there right now saying I don't have any leads, it will take you, if you obsessed 20 hours of your week, you could even put a timer on and like test this out and obsessed over Facebook ads and just learned Facebook ads. You watched every YouTube video, you started running Facebook ads yourself, you started scaling up some money, you know, you started looking at what everyone else is doing. Like you would fundamentally change your business. If you spent 20 hours on reels, like looking at other people's reels, get out a notebook, write down hooks. What does a hook mean? What's the story mean? How long should it go for? What trending music should it be? What platform should it be on? What ratio? Like, and you just like actually obsessed over that instead of thinking about how you're not doing it because you've got no time. And so on and so forth. And so what we do is we think we need to do everything and we do nothing good. And then we never do anything good. Like no one multitasks themselves to greatness. But if you Mm -hmm. just go for one thing and just say, I'm going to obsess over this one thing for this month, like that's it. And I know I've got 20 hours spare this month. Like I'm going to cancel my Netflix subscription. Like let's be honest. I'm on there too much. You know, whatever it is. And, um, you know, delete Instagram and TikTok off your phone for a month. Give yourself 20 hours back. And go and change your business. I think that's just like a really important thing to remember that like everything is not as hard as what people think. And I think so so much we just get stuck in not knowing. And not knowing creates overwhelm and burnout. Mm -hmm. Doing the work actually doesn't create overwhelm or burnout. I like that. I have two things to say. One, this is literally just I'm just going to say it and then move on. Social media is such a distraction. It's it's it distracts everybody it's so I feel like it's so bad for business like it's just personally I feel like people can't get anything done because they're just so addicted to social media okay I'm just gonna drop that there because like I just Mm -hmm. feel like I have to say it I agree yeah number two (laughs) (laughs) um how do you figure out what like tasks and things to do are a priority for you in a day and in a week Okay. Well, number one is, um, what's my biggest problem? And so a lot of people will be like, my biggest problem is I don't have any leads. I'm like, well, you better not be working on your website this week. Like (laughs) you, you need to go and find your clients. Like that's Mm -hmm. absolute number one. And if you're not doing that, you're procrastinating for some reason. And procrastination is not a bad thing. We can talk about that as well, but But the most important thing is the thing in front of me. So if I've got no leads, man, I'm obsessing over how do I find leads? And then I will put time into, I need need another lead generation tool because whatever I did is not working. And then I'll start writing out which, which one is the thing that I need to do. And I do this all the time. Like I'll do this, for instance, with no skin. So with my clothing business, I'm like, Facebook ads are not working. What do we need to do? I would start obsessing over learning Bing ads because everyone's on Bing now because Bing is, you know, using so much AI and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, I just spent 20 hours. I actually know those ads back to front and they're working now. And I'm like, I didn't know that a week ago. So I'm glad mm-hmm. that I put my phone on flight and then I obsessed over this one thing. So that's what I do. It's like, I think so often everyone works on things that are not moving the needle. But if you actually worked out like what brings in the most money, what brings you the most joy and what brings you the most happiness and, and all these things and then work on those things and everything else that you're not good at, like leave those to last. And here's another little tip. And this is something that we learned at school and it makes no sense. At school, I remember I was really good at art. I was at the top of my art class. I was at the bottom of my maths class, like the absolute bottom. So guess what? The teachers would send me home. And they'll get me to do homework on maths. And I had to work on maths all the time. And I fucking sucked at it, right? It just, like, I didn't like maths. And yeah. so we, we are conditioned to do, to do that now. So what we do is the things that are working, the things that we're good at, we don't put time into it. We put time into what's not good and what's not working. 
instead of get rid of what's not working or outsource it, find another way and then double down on what actually works. You don't need to do the homework on the shit stuff, you know, and Mm -hmm. you can book out six figures worth of work easy from one strategy. You don't need Pinterest and blogging and TikTok and threads and Instagram and Facebook and networking and, you know, the list goes on forever. Mm -hmm. No, that's really, that's really good advice. I never thought of it like that. I feel like I'm the type of person who is going to work on the stuff that I'm not good at. Mm. But then you think like the stuff that you're good at, that's what's going to make your business succeed. So why are you not like improving that? Because it's, it's working. Like don't put time and energy into things that aren't working. A really good example for you is like, you're really good at reels. You're really good at TikTok, right? And then imagine if you spent most of your days working on Pinterest because you don't have much of a Pinterest following. And it's like, this is stuff that we do. It's like, why do that when I could have just created more reels? Honestly, like why play it hard in business? It doesn't need to be hard. And if I don't like Pinterest, I don't need to fucking do Pinterest just because the experts tell me that Pinterest is a thing. Like fuck the experts. I'm going (laughs) to do the thing that makes me feel happy. And that's getting on there and doing reels. Yeah. I think a lot of the times we hear the (laughs) advice that you need to like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to spread out your marketing, mm. you know? And <clears throat> so like, I find myself doing that. Like you literally said, like I, you know, so I think sometimes it's like, you have to actually think about the advice that you're given. It's like, okay, is this actually like good advice? Yeah. Like, who did it come from? Yeah, exactly. Because like, even with don't put all your eggs in one basket, like I, my dad told me that and my dad was dead poor. Like he never had a job, never. And so he was always like, don't put your eggs in one basket. And I hear that from like a lot of my poor community that just don't, they just never made any money. And it wasn't until I started questioning that phrase, I looked it up and it was made for people that are not very smart that want to go in and invest their money, but they don't want to put in any time to like work out shares and things like that. So they go, don't put all your eggs in one basket because what they didn't want in America is everyone to lose all their money straight away as soon as they start investing. And so now we're all conditioned to to that. But if you look at all the rich people, the people that make all the money, they put all their eggs in one basket. Like Elon Musk will go, I'm going all in on Tesla, on business. I'm going all in on that. Warren Buffett's like, I'm going all in on shares. I don't buy cryptocurrency. I go all in on shares. You know, you, you go all in on making reels. Like you're not going on to LinkedIn and going on to every single thing. You're going all in. And so when you look around, the people that go all in and obsess over one thing, they go they go two inches wide and a mile deep on one thing. Like they're the ones that always win the game. And when I learned this, I actually made a lot of money because I realized I was like trying to not put all my eggs in one basket, but it all it left me with a mediocre life, mediocre returns and me being more confused because I didn't understand anything. And the second that I put all my eggs in one basket and just said, no, fuck this, I'm going all in. It was the second that everything blew up for me. Yeah. That is such good advice. Literally. (laughs) That's crazy. I've never even thought about that phrase being like not legit until just now. Like I'm pretty sure I've been saying that. It blows your mind. I've looked up the history of that phrase and everything because I was, I was stuck on that phrase for so long and I still hear everyone saying it and I'm like, it can't be true though. Another phrase that blows my mind and my dad used to always say this, if it's too good to be true, then it's too good. And what I realized was, I'm like, dad, that's because you don't value yourself. You have a knowledge gap. Like there's things that you don't understand. And so you think everyone's out to rip you off. But what I realize is I know my value. I know my resourcefulness. Like I know where I'm at in my life. And so if something's too good to be true, it's because I made it too good to be true. You know, and so it's, I'm walking through that fucking door. You know, it's not a rip off. No one's scamming me. Like I'm, <laughs> I've created these opportunities. And so I've actually seen, especially photographers, like hold themselves back because they'll say to me, Joe, I've got this amazing opportunity. I'm thinking about doing this and this and this. And at the end of it, they'll go, but I didn't say yes because it's too good to be true. You know, I'm really worried about it. And I'm like, you know, you're just not valuing yourself here. And you've, and you've been fed bad advice because mm-hmm. if it's too good to be true, it's probably because you made that true. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like sometimes <laughs> being like a yes man is like, that's kind of like what I think in that scenario is like, being a yes man versus being kind of like a no man. Mm. And I feel like saying yes has gotten me more places than I realized. Just being like willing to (laughs) do something truly. Yes, I know. And this is something no one talks about because everyone always says no. But what's interesting is the people that have, the people that teach like you should say no, I honestly believe they haven't even said yes enough yet because you should say no. There's a time and place when you need to say no, but 
most people that are thinking they need to say no haven't even gotten to the realm of saying yes too much yet. They're not mm-hmm. even close, not even in the ballpark. And when you, yeah. you will know when you get to a point in your career, when you have so much success and so much of everything where you go like, I better say no right now because mm-hmm. this makes sense. But before yeah. then, like you've got to say yes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just over here self-reflecting hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun. And I think like, um, so business is just, in, in my opinion, is so empowering. And, and for so many people, you know, like I was mentoring um, a girl from the Six Figure Business Map, which is like my course thing last, uh, just a couple of days ago. And I could see that she was like really trying to like create an amazing business. And she was like really impatient to get success and stuff. But I started digging down into her why. And I'm like, why though? And then I knew it's because like, you know, a lot of the times like females, they have something more to prove than anybody else. Like they want to prove and show their space in the world that I am fierce and I am like not to be reckoned with and I'm fucking creating something. You can't stop me, right? And I see this and I love this energy. That's probably why I'm fully surrounded by females all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I love this energy. I don't like the dude energy that's just like complacent <laughs> and, and, you know, entitled. So... Like I got deep on her though and it was like, so why though? Why are you trying to find this? And then it came down to like, well, my dad left my mom and me when we were young and my mom was a stay-at-home housewife and all of a sudden she had to try and make something work and she wasn't capable of earning income because that's just not what she did. And so she's scared of being in the place where that happens to her, you know. And so we have all these like – past experiences in our life of reasons why like I said the reason why I I didn't want to be you know broke anymore and I didn't want to be out of control anymore so business for me was a change of that but what I love about business is it's the vehicle that can actually help her do that like she can be that fierce woman that does that takes over the world like if that's what she wants to do she can do that and Mm -hmm. you can only do that in business because you have no boss like there's no one on top of you you're not trying to like climb up the rungs or anything but the toxic thing that, you know, I brought to her attention is there's no awards. So from in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s, uh, and this is from the schooling system, you got rewarded for doing things alone and people would be like, you're a self-made. You're a self-made millionaire. You're a self-made business owner. And um, if you went to school or like university, like you had to do exams by yourself. You couldn't have help because I'd be cheating. And so we've been so taught to be self-made. And what we do is we don't ask for help from anybody and we don't collaborate with anybody. And Mm -hmm. it's you don't win awards for that anymore. Like if I see someone, they're like, man, I'm self-made. I'm like, well, you're not because there's people that have helped you along the way. Don't forget those people. You know, you've got to give some gratitude towards those people. Um, Someone's giving you a compliment. Someone's giving you, you know, a connection, a piece of advice, like whatever it is, maybe some money. And I think it's just like really, really important to remember that like it's selfish to try and do it all alone. You don't need to prove to anyone. And in fact, I would believe if if you are a leader and you can bring people into your world and give them opportunities, get collaborate with their superpowers, their talents and things like that, then I think there's an award for that. Like I think that's Mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about even my business, like asking my friends to model for me. Like I would not have been able to grow my portfolio without having Mm. those initial photos. And then I think of like all the people who have like promoted me on social media, like referred me just like my friends who genuinely care about me. Like, like you said, you don't get a reward for not for like doing it on your own. The only difference between someone that's self-made and someone that had help is the person that had help probably has more time on their hands because they they're going to get a lot outsourced further. yeah like yeah. they literally can get further because you're not trying to do everything on your own like that mindset of doing it all on your own oh. is actually like keeping you in a box yeah and this is amazing thing I, I read this book um by dan sullivan he's an amazing coach he, he's been around for like the last 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s like teaching stuff and um he's got a book called who not how and he was talking literally about this concept of your goals can be as big as the people you have around you or as big as your team. And so what most people do is they only create their goals based on their own beliefs, their own talents, their own skills, their own bank account, like their own connections. But if you actually worked in that way, then, man, you can hit unrealistic goals. You can hit goals so much bigger than you believe because you have a big network of people around you. And I think that's really important. 
Yeah, for sure. Like if you're not good at like customer service or whatever, like mm, if you find someone that has someone. that skill set, yeah, you're expanding <laughs> your business and like you can basically be like the superhuman without actually being the superhuman, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel like my life is. Like everyone's like, Joe, how do you do all the things? So I'm like, well, just as so you know, do you know I don't read one email because I fucking hate emails. <laughs> like I just don't do that. And it's yeah. so many people like, man, Jai, like I'm on emails all day. How can I do something? I'm like, outsource that shit. You can get someone five bucks, 10 bucks an hour to do that. There's a lot of AI that can help you with that stuff. Um, since I started my career, when I first started in 2013 as a full-time photographer, the first person I hired when I didn't have any money was a bookkeeper. And she actually is just retiring, I think, next week. She's, she's actually retiring. Like she's a bit older now. But she's been with me for like... 10 years now, you know, and it's amazing. And so she's like, Joe, I've seen your business absolutely blow up. And it's strange when you hired me, you couldn't even really afford me. Like you're going on payment plans and stuff. And I'm like, because I didn't want to do accounts. And that's Mm -hmm. how much I didn't want to do it. I'd rather have no money because I wanted to make sure my accounts were good and I didn't have to worry about my business and I wanted to get back to shooting. It's all I wanted to do. I didn't care how much money was in my bank account, man. As long as I can shoot and not sit there. Like imagine having a little bit of money in your bank account, but you spend all your time editing and emails and accounts and stuff like that. I'd be like, that is a shit career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for real. I'd rather have no money and shoot all the time. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Just focusing on the things that you love. Like, I feel like that's, that honestly is why people start their businesses because they want to do what Mm. they love instead of having a boss, you know, for, I feel like if, if you're really an entrepreneur, it's not about the money. It's about what you're doing that it's that's why freedom. yeah that's yeah. why we start our own businesses in the first place because we want yeah that freedom and yeah. it starts by realizing okay what's not my strength <laughs> and like mm. what should I not be doing so then I can actually do the things that I want to do yeah well actually in this book as well a really good book if you want to go and read it um highly recommend um so Dan Sullivan talks about procrastination and he says you've got something right now that you're procrastinating on Now, this is not a bad thing. It just means that your future and your goals are bigger than what you're executing right now. So it's giving you anxiety, right? You just haven't executed. It also means if you haven't jumped on and did the job, it's because it's not the job for you and you're worried about the wrong thing. You're trying to work out the how. Really, you got to work out the who. Who could launch this project with you? Who could do the reels with you? Who could run the Facebook ads with you? Who? So it's always like the who instead of the how. If we're sitting there and we don't know how to do it, we're asking the wrong question. And if we're just not doing it, you just haven't launched the thing yet. It's because you're so stubborn that you won't ask for help and collaborate with someone's superpower somewhere. So you've got to get yourself out of your own way, please. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's a really good point on procrastinating. I feel like that's what a lot of business owners deal with is Mm. like just all the things I could have been doing. Yeah, paralyzed by the fact that they have something to do, but they just won't do it. And that's because it's not the right task. Oh, no. And also, like, sometimes it's – um, I actually got a little bit of hate for this, funny enough, in my in my course, in my six-figure business map, because one example is um, everyone's asking me, like, Jai, can you do a deep dive on how to install your Facebook Pixel and so we can, like, for our ads and stuff? And my answer is always, like, I'd love to do that but it costs roughly around about like 7 to $10 to outsource it um, on Upwork. And once you outsource it, you never have to do it again. Like once it's done, mm-hmm. you never have to do it again, which means I don't re- believe you need to learn it because if you don't need need it over and over, why would you need to learn it? And they're like, no, 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 I need, like I don't want to spend money. I want to do it myself. But doing it yourself takes, like sometimes it takes people three hours. Also, it takes a month because they go, I haven't started my Facebook ads yet because I don't know how to install the pixel. And that's what they say. And I'm like, you've got a $7 problem on your hand that's holding you back your whole business. It's holding back thousands of dollars. And so what we need to do is we need to change our mindset on that. And we need to go like, okay, my career and my success is too important to be held back by a $7 problem. And I bet any problem that you have right now, you can put a price tag on that problem, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we can get through these problems. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. You're like, I can't tell you how to do it because I outsourced it myself. So you just got to yeah, go I just outsource. outsource it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've even put in like a, a little thing in there where we help people outsource and I show people how to outsource as well. And I think it's just like really important to have that skill set because that's the skill set that's worth learning over how to install the pixel. Like if you can learn how to outsource and then be a leader and then, you know, set up like many pass or one password so that you, so you can bring them in. 
and you learn out that system, it means you can outsource more stuff now. And now mm -hmm. the world you're oyster, you can start looking around and go, like, maybe I could outsource my follow-up emails. Maybe I could outsource, you know, my scheduling. Maybe I could outsource my editing. Maybe I could outsource my culling. Maybe I could outsource like my... I outsource like cleaning of my house, you know, cleaning of my car, mowing my lawn, like all this stuff that I don't need to be doing. Because yeah. if I'm going to spend, okay, if I work hard all week and um, on Saturday I got to go and spend three hours mowing my lawn and it costs some, like it costs $50 to outsource it. Like I would rather have three hours on a Saturday to myself than $50. Like I, yeah. I would, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. And once you start outsourcing, it's like addicting because you realize what life could be like if you weren't mm. doing these things. That's how it is for me. Once I did one outsourcing, I was like, I'm outsourcing this and this and this and this. And honestly, I wouldn't have time in my business if I did everything, you know, like you no, really just because, have to give up. Well, if control. you did everything, yeah. you're, you're not like, I hate saying this because I know it upsets people, but you're not really a business owner. You're a freelancer. Like, let's be honest. Like if you are like sitting in a chair right now and nothing moves until you move, like nothing happens. There's no money that goes in your bank account. No work gets done. Is that a business? Because I've never seen a business like that. Like to me, that's you're a freelancer and you work for yeah. yourself. Maybe you're like you call yourself a solo entrepreneur because you're doing something a little bit more wild. But entrepreneurship and business owner is also very different. And I can explain the difference as well. Yeah. Okay. There's so many, like so many ways that I like to explain this, but like, okay, so a business owner loves to repeat and, a, and an entrepreneur loves to innovate. And so a business owner, um, in my opinion, so a business owner loves like and creates like transactional relationships. So they want to like, you know, they'll never work for free. They, they want some money for the thing they're doing, but entrepreneurs create um transformational relationships like they'll work regardless if they get paid they know they've got a bigger why a bigger purpose things like that um entrepreneurs are like artists and business owners are like creatives so a huge difference there because an art, like a creative is not an artist and i think so many photographers like they're creatives but i wouldn't necessarily say they're artists like an artist doesn't sit there and cull 10,000 photos to find one good photo like an artist is intentional and they're out there creating something because they want to make someone feel something opposed to delivering to clients so a creative is like working for clients there's a client brief it's all set in stone of what they have to do there's expectations you know and you can be so creative with that man like if you're going to go do some headshots for some lawyers like they want it their certain way but of course you can bring your creativity into it and you can do something really cool but an artist mm -hmm. probably won't do headshot for lawyers. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I see like there's, there is like a huge difference. Um, but the, that main one, oh, so an entrepreneur wants freedom and a business owner wants security. Like a business owner wants to know that they're going to get work next week and next month and they're going to be in business next year. Where an entrepreneur doesn't give a fuck if they're in business next year. <laughs> like they're literally going like, I'm having fun now. I'm going to make some reels. I'm going to get on threads. I'm going to go and create some stuff. Like this tanked. I only got 10 views. It doesn't matter. Because entrepreneurs, they're not obsessing over those things. They don't care about the security and the accolades and all that kind of stuff. They yeah. care about freedom. And freedom is the freedom to create without judgment. You know, the freedom of relationships, the freedom of money, the freedom to think the way that you want to think or do the things that you want to do, regardless if it makes sense in business or not. Yeah. Okay. I am so freaking inspired right now by that <laughs> I, because I feel like, like people are so focused on security. I don't know if it's like a recent thing, but it's like, I want security. I want to be able to know that this is going to succeed. I'm thinking specifically like the people who are side hustling, maybe working a corporate job. And they're like, I mm -hmm. want to make sure this succeeds. But I feel like the best attitude is to just like, be like, okay, like if it doesn't, I'll do something else. Even like for me, mm. I'm like, I, in two years, I could not be doing this and I could totally. do something else. Yeah. And it's like, that's okay. Like, I think that's kind of how life is. Like you literally have to be willing to adapt and change your business and your mindset as you go along. Um, mm. And it's interesting to think about the difference between a freelancer and an entrepreneur like that specifically, like does business happen Huge when you're in hey? bed, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, it doesn't for most of us. And like, and to be, um, and make sure pre-frame this and make sure that like everyone, no one's feeling bad right now. Like it's important to have everybody because not everyone's going to be an entrepreneur and wants that risk and, and insecurity. Not everyone wants to be a business owner. Not everyone wants to be a freelancer. And it's like, 
Um, not one of them is better than the other. It's all mm-hmm. comes down to us and our personality and our tolerance to risk and what we actually want deep down. Because what we want deep down is going to reflect in what we create. So if deep down you want security, then you will be a really good business owner because business owners will rinse and repeat the same process over and over to make sure that they continue to make that money. Where entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. like myself, like I will have something and I'm like, that makes a lot of money. I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore though. And everyone's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it doesn't bring me happiness. And to be honest, it's holding me back from doing something else. I don't know what the uh, the something else is, but I don't want to repeat that same shit again because it just doesn't bring me any happiness. And Mm -hmm. so like... It makes no sense to anyone else in the outside world, but it makes sense to me because now I can, in my world, I'm like, I'm holding myself back by doing the same thing where I already know what's going to happen. So why not try something else and see, even if I fail, like I said before, it's like I fall in love with losing and winning. And I think that's really important. Yeah. 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 That's a good distinction too. Just like saying it's not bad to be either. Cause I think of like someone that owns a successful bakery. That is like the definition of, repeat like you just repeat but like if it does well like who cares like you can repeat all day long because your process works um yeah and you've created something that's for you and only you and that you love and you should be proud of that yes exactly love that so okay i wanted to ask you maybe to wrap up this episode like if there is someone that is starting their business they're pretty early on give Mm -hmm. me like five steps or like five things that you're like, you should do this right now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, first thing I want you to do, obviously like, so just wrapping up everything we just went through, it's like your mindset. Like I want you to keep upgrading your mindset as much as you upgrade your phone. So it's our operating system. So it's like really important that we keep upgrading that and looking around and having the humility to know that you don't know everything. You're not as good as you think you are. And there's a lot to learn because I think that's like really important. Like for all of us, you know, keep learning. Um, there's so many amazing resources out there right now that you can keep learning on things. And then the next thing is we've got to take action on stuff. So the things that I take action on things, what I would do if I was just starting out is, um, I look around and identify where there's problems and I identify what's going to, what I need the most first. So here's some examples. What are some problems? Well, problems are right now, most people are overwhelmed with social media. Most people care that they're going to get 10 views so they won't post. Most people care that there's like more social media accounts so they're overwhelmed, things like that. That means there's a golden opportunity for you to be on social media because whilst everyone else is confused, you're making a strategy. And I think that's like really important. That means you can actually win the game. So if you see there's a problem somewhere for a bunch of people, then you know that it can be fixed. Like I've seen this back in the day when everyone goes like, oh, I get ghosted all the time. I was like, oh, there's a massive problem. I know how to fix it for myself. And I convert 100% of the time, right? Because I obsessed over that because I knew that everyone else was letting their lead slide away and then I wouldn't let them slide away. So what's the first thing you need to do? Well, don't work on the wrong things straight away. Like you don't need a perfect brand. You don't need a perfect website. You don't need a perfect anything. Like you need clients. And regardless if they pay you or not, like if you have clients and you're showing that you have clients, it's going to get you so much further. Now, I know I talk about working for free and this is not advice for everybody. This is just how I did it. But what I look at is if I go down to, if I go down the street, and I see a really busy cafe and there's all trendy people out there and shit's going on. And then there's a cafe next door and it's cheaper and no one's at it. You can bet that I'll go and stand in line in the busy cafe because I don't want to miss out and I don't, I don't want to risk going to the crappy cafe, right? And so as photographers, I want you to think about that. Like, are you the quiet cafe that's desperate asking like, I'm doing a sale, um, you know, I, I'm not going to lower my prices, this and that. Or are you the busy cafe that people can't get enough of? And to get busy, I would get busy. I would like be creating shoots and showing behind the scenes. I'd be shooting for free. Like I'll be collaborating with others. I would be just like creating. I would be in the creating phase and I'll create as much as I can until I can't create anymore. And then I'd probably get a second job and I'd drive Uber and I'd be a barista and I'll keep <laughs> creating and I'd be back. Um, because the more that you can create, um, you're creating more hype, more buzz, more testimonials, um, more presence, like more followers, like you're creating everything. And this is really important because once you start asking for lots of money, it all kind of goes downhill. It gets really hard if you don't have that foundational base of like, this is who I am, this is my style, this is what I'm doing and everything. So number one's mindset. Number two is um, creating and working on that. 
Number three is I would start working out like what's worked in my business and what hasn't. And often there's this rule called the 80-20 rule and there's a book written about it. I can't remember who wrote the book, but there's a lot of people that, um, that talk about this book. But the 80-20 rule basically means like 80, uh, 20% of your money, your results comes from um, – like 20% of the, of the, no, sorry, 80% of your results and everything comes from 20% of the work that you've done and then the opposite. So with that in mind, like we work, like 80% of the stuff that we work relates to 20% of our results. So we're working on a lot of stuff that doesn't work and it just keeps us busy. And I would rather you have a day off than do that. I'd rather you work three days a week instead of five. You know, if, you've, if you just don't want to do anything else, like just do that you would feel more refreshed and more energized and you'd be able to create more and do more, you know, and, and so much more. So with that, I would work out what's the 20% of, of things that get you the biggest results. Like 20, what's the 20% of the clients top two out of your 10 clients, like which ones pay you the most? How can you get rid of the other ones? How can you sack the other clients that are, that are like bringing you pain? All the tasks that you do, like at, what's the 20%? Like if I was shooting, if I was a wedding photographer all week, and one day a week, I'm actually shooting a wedding. I would say that's probably a high value task and that's a big impact. The second day is like me marketing. That's a high value task. Everything else, like getting back to emails and like editing, I'm like, is that high value? I'm like, no, nah, that's the 80%. It's not me bringing me any money or mm-hmm. impact or yeah. no one sees me. Like it, it makes no sense. And mm-hmm. so go through your business, audit it, wipe everything off the table, start again and bring back what's actually working. And then I want you just to look at, both sides of, of your whiteboard and go, okay, so here's all the things that doesn't bring me joy or happiness or money or anything else. And then start looking at those things and go, do I need to do them still? Do I really have to do them just because everyone else is doing? If I do, can I outsource them? How much would it cost to outsource something like this? If I don't have the money, would I get the money? If on the other side of the platform, I start marketing more and bringing in more work. You know, and so that's how you start growing a business opposed to being a freelancer. Um, next thing I'll do is, um, I know this one's like talked about a lot and, and I think sometimes it can sound cheesy and stuff, but you need to get deep on your why because if you are not deep on your why, then the second that something gets hard, you will give up. The second you get 10 views on Instagram, you'll give up. You know, and it's just really hard to keep showing up if you don't have a massive why. And I want to share one for, with you, actually. Mm-hmm. When I started my first business, which was a cafe, so this was when I was 20 years old, the reason why I did that is because I needed, I want to get my dad out of um, rehab. So he was a drug addict. Um, at the time, it was really hard for me. I just finished my apprenticeship as an electrician. It was really hard for me to see him there like I know he was like my whole life he was taking drugs and everything and he used to sell drugs and stuff but seeing him in rehab and sort of more at the end of his life was like such a hard thing for me to go through and so I wanted to get him out of that and the only way I could work that out was by getting him a job so he would have purpose so I created this cafe with um, my now wife and it was huge you could sit 300 people like it was just like a big massive thing and then about two weeks before we opened the cafe, he died of a drug overdose. And so that was my why. And so my why completely disappeared. And then from there, I went bankrupt 12 months later. Of course I did because I gave up. Like yeah. why would I keep fighting when I'm going through everything else? And so mm-hmm. I know this so deeply and that's why I'm like saying to any entrepreneur, any business owner, freelancer that's out there, it's like, if you don't have that why still, it's going to be really hard to go forward. Just if you're doing it for the likes, you're doing it for the views and stuff, it's going to be really hard. But if you have a deep why, like you're going to show up regardless if someone cares if you have a second job. Like you're going to show up regardless if someone sees you as a failure or if you've got no views. Like you're going to fucking show up because it means something to you. And I think that's really mm-hmm. important. Yeah. And then the last one, um, I think last one is like don't take yourself so seriously. Like business is really fun. It's really creative and you get to make the rules. And like break those fucking rules, make the rules, break the rules. I think it's really important. Like there's just so much freedom in it. And I think if it's hard for you now, it's maybe it's because you're playing by um, an an employee mindset and maybe by an employee's rules. Like they're they're completely different. Like employees will say stuff like you got to have work-life balance. Like entrepreneurs don't say that because it doesn't make sense for an entrepreneur, you know. So Mm -hmm. you might be confined to the wrong rule book for the game that you're playing 
And so it's making it really hard for you. So find the right rule book. And then when you find it, you're going to get in the flow and it's really easy. It's really creative. It's really rewarding. And then you'll have so much abundance because you'll be in that flow. Yeah. And that's it. That is amazing. I just want to say thank you for sharing all of that. I know like it's, it's hard to come on here and be like vulnerable and like tell everyone, you know, why you're doing what you're doing, but like, it's really impactful. Like the things Mm. you've gone through, um, you're able to now go and like teach other people. So I just want to say thank you for sharing all of that. That was, thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. Yeah, totally. And like, literally I just asked you on the fly, give me five things. And you were like, okay, here's five things. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Cool. Well, um, is there anything else you want to say? Anything else you want to put Um, out there? No, I I think, I think that's just, I think I think it's just important for um, anyone that's listening out there. And if I triggered you in any way, it's probably because there's some work that needs to be done. But I'm saying it with love, and I've been through the shit, right? And so I'm I'm saying it from experience as well. And I want you to remember that you don't need to listen to me or Cassidy or any anyone else that's an expert in anything. Like you got to listen to yourself. And we are all here because you can leverage our knowledge and our skills. And the things that we've learned and whatever that is, but you got to plug in the things that make you happy. And that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's every bit, every person's business is different. different. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're all like doing our own thing because we all have different experiences and stuff. So exactly. And I've actually got a workshop coming up in Los Angeles. Yes. I was going to say, tell everyone about your workshop and like where they can find you and all of that. Yeah, so we got um, a workshop called the Unrealistic Workshop coming up on the 23rd and 24th of August. And you can be in person. We've still got tickets left. Or you, if you can't get there in person, it's also online. And we're, it's going to be amazing. We're, online, we're thinking like MTV, 90s MTV vibes with someone walking around with a microphone, like interviewing all the speakers <laughs> behind stage and all the, all the attendees and stuff like that. Speakers are like India Earl, Nathan Chansky, um, Jennifer Moher, Karamia, Usher, Bailey, myself. There's a whole bunch and it's going to be flipping incredible. Sorry for yeah. all the swear words as well. But um, <laughs> you, can fi- you can find that over at my Instagram really. So if you just go to jialong.co, J-A-I-L-O-N-G dot C-O, and you can find me, send me a DM, say hello, and yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. I'll have all your stuff linked in the description too. So if anyone listening wants to go find you. Yes. Hey, Cassidy, thank you so much. And honestly, what I want to say to you is thank you so much for inspiring me with all the stuff that you're doing. It's flipping incredible. Actually, you fully inspired me the other day when you like created those, um, your AI brushes, man, I was like, fuck yes. Like, this is amazing. (laughs) Like, honestly, straight up. Um, I just love seeing innovation. I love seeing people creating cool stuff and I think you're yeah. doing it and it really, it really brings me energy and I think it's really cool that thank you're doing you. that from the other side of the world. Yeah, thank you. I, it's funny, I wasn't even going to launch those brushes. Wow. I, had, I was like, these are not cool. Like everyone's going to be like, these are, like, these are stupid. I don't Is need these. Is everyone loving them? Yes, like literally one of my best selling products. <clears throat> and I'm like, I literally could have not put that out there. You know? Oh man, they're you're a genius. They're amazing. Like <laughs> it's exactly what people need, and and like everyone's like bringing out another preset, and then you brought that out, and I'm like, that's exactly what we need. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on today's episode. Um, it was so great chatting with you, and I hope everyone listening has a great rest of their day. So much And the shadows is my composure All the layers above, all the edits and tweaks I know her I am so done, need more time developing in my red room It doesn't matter wherever I am on the top of the mountain Or down in quicksand, whatever the moment, wherever we stand I'm taking 
It doesn't matter wherever I am on the top of the mountain or down in quicksand. Whatever the moment, wherever we stand, I'm taking you, taking you, taking you. Getting a little bit higher With every step I take I'm getting good Getting a little bit better I'm climbing to the top Never gonna stop I'm getting good Getting a little bit higher With every step I take I'm getting good Getting a little bit better, I'm climbing to the top, never gonna